I'm Israel with Heavy Metal Reptiles, um, and we're going to start doing videos, kind of just documenting as we're getting into breeding and things, and we're going to do some informational videos um, about ball pythons, king snakes, um, leopard geckos, blue tongue skinks, and other things as we get the animals to actually physically show you guys. Um, kind of been like my thing to breed. I've wanted to breed ball pythons for a long time. I've gotten into more snakes like king snakes and um, I'm actually thinking about a bull snake and I'd like to get a hog nose and probably African egg eating snakes too. I think those would be cool and you don't see a lot of that stuff so I want to get into more like the uncommon thing. Um, I've just had a love for ball pythons for a long time so it's kind of what I decided to start with. Um, but we're going to do a lot of different things. I want to do controversial topics that maybe you guys can like comment and give me a topic and we can cover it. Um, obviously this will be all based off of opinion because I don't really believe unless you're someone that's very educated in doing this for like a living, there's not really a bad way to keep your ball python unless you're doing something completely out of the ordinary that's harming the snake. Um, the same thing goes for blue tongue skinks and, and other lizards and reptiles. Um, pretty much because we're taking wild animals and putting them in captivity, so we're mimicking what they live in. As long as you're doing that to the best of your ability, I mean, you're not really screwing up. So, I mean, obviously though, there's things that people do that they think's right, and there's things that other people do that they think's right, and then if you're against whatever everyone else is doing then you're wrong and it gets controversial so I want to be able to cover some of that stuff um but for this video I've got Firestorm here which is my pied ball um I've had him for about a month I think um he's my first pied and that's why he's so cool because I've always wanted a pied it's like my dream snake I, I mean there's a lot of ball python morphs out there that are really cool but I just really like the pies. I wanted a high white but I got Firestorm here and then around my neck I got Baphomet. Um, we actually recently found out that Baphomet is a she and not a he um, because when I bought him or bought her she was uh, told to me that it was male and it's not. This is a male though so he's going to be kind of like our stud muffin. Um, I got a couple other snakes that I'm gonna breed him to um, and try and get some really cool um, morphs out of and new that wouldn't be new but just cool pack or pairings um, Baphomet's just a normal um, he's probably around four years old I'm thinking or she's about four years old I'm thinking um, but all my breeder animals the reason it's gonna be a while before we actually have hatchlings is because I'm raising all of them from hatchlings up, so I know that the, the breeder animals have been in good care. Um, after going to a couple expos and things, I realize you probably don't want to buy your breeder from an expo, honestly. So, uh, anyways, we're going to just go over kind of a ball python setup today and what I think's right. Um, like I said, it's purely based on opinion, so what I'm doing might not work for you. Uh, or you might have a different way of doing it. Um, like for heating, for instance, this whole room, which is my band room, which is why Heavy Metal Reptiles is what we're calling the uh, company that we're working on. Um, it's all regulated pretty much year-round. I have different things I do to keep the temperatures in the room for the reptiles in the room. So the whole room stays roughly between 70 to 85 degrees, depending on the time of year, obviously, and things, um, along with some things inside the cages I do to regulate temperatures. Um, I actually currently started using um, heat mats compared to heat rocks because, or not heat rocks, heat tape, because, I don't know, I just feel like it's better, it's smarter, um, in my opinion. Um, because I do keep certain animals in tubs, and the ones in tubs now actually get over the head heat for their hot sides, um, and it's been working pretty decently. Um, but like I said, um, when 
I'm doing might not work for you guys. It's just it's working for me right now with my current setup and, and the animals. Obviously, I try to keep everybody with a hot side. Uh, my king snake currently doesn't have a hot side uh, just because the room's naturally warm. Um, and he doesn't seem to mind. But obviously, he's in a uh, temporary enclosure too for right now. But we'll introduce him in another video. Um, as far as substrate goes, I use a coconut husk and a coconut fiber mixture, um, which they say that ball pythons are actually really cost effective, and they can be, but not when you get up to where I've got five now. Um, so, I mean, every time I got to redo cages, I'm dropping over $100 just in substrate. You know, feeds, I'm doing over 30 to $40 a week, or, or every other week, I would say, because Baphomet's only eaten every other week. Um, and Courtney, which is the one up on the shelf behind me, she's mean. I don't get her out very often for, like, showing and things because she likes to try and eat whoever is holding her. She just struck up a glass. Like that. Don't know. That's one of the things that I hear a lot is the ball pythons are good beginner snakes. And sure, they can be. But what they forget to tell everybody is that they're wild animals. They all have their own personality, and some snakes just are mean. I work with Courtney quite a bit alone. I try to keep her away from my son because of how aggressive she is. Um, if you can see the cage, there's no nothing in the cage right now because she actually has a rat in there. I do feed live to everybody besides my fire anchi, um, which is uh, Perry, which we found out after we bought him that she's actually a sheep too um but uh everybody else eats live besides him um personally i don't like live i think that there's a lot of benefits to live that you don't get from frozen but i just don't like seeing the, the rats die i mean i kind of am all for all kinds of snakes except for or animals but um zoom which is the california or the florida king snake i got he is fun to watch eat. And like I said, I don't like to see the other animals die, but he is really fun to watch eat. Um, anyways, there should definitely be a hot side to the cage. I keep my hot sides right around 80 to 85 degrees, which some can argue that that's too high. The ambient temperature, though, like I said in the room, on average is around 70 ish degrees so it's very rare that it gets up there in the 80 it's actually usually uh around the season change right about now when i start fighting with it and um it flexes up and down a lot um but all like i said all my ball pythons are healthy happy um it's actually like almost midnight that's why firestorm here is so active i think um baphomet he's just always a cheer, chill guy to have out so even in his enclosure at night he's pretty chill um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know, we can talk all day about ball pythons. I definitely don't think you need a warm and cold hide, that's for sure. And I say that and everyone's going to freak out and it think it's one of those controversial topics. My snakes, like Firestorm, I had his hide on the warm side um, and was going to get him a cold hide too, but... He actually never used his hide on the warm side. So I switched his hide to the cold side and he started using it. Um, and now he actually just doesn't use his warm side at all. And when he does use his warm side, he wants to be out. Even when I put a hide on his warm side, he doesn't use it. So um, I just don't keep one in with him. Um, did she just strike up a glass again? I don't know. She's really mean. Um... Anyways, as far as like the tubs and the aquarium argument goes to, I do both. I have Firestorm and um, my Spider Ball, Black Widow. Both are kept in these smaller tubs here. Perry, which is underneath me, he's in a, I think that's a four foot long tub, roughly-ish. Um, my king snake's in a four foot long tub, which, like I said, is temporary for him. We're going to be getting him in an aquarium as soon as we can. Um, but I don't see a problem with tubs as long as you're heating them in some way. 
I do think that it is important for the snakes to have a hot side if possible. Um, but you can get your hot side however you want. I don't believe that everyone's like, use a heating pad and a thermostat. I mean, definitely need to be regulating what is going on. But if you can get your temperature on that hot side from an external source like a heating lamp and you're keeping track of it, I guess I kind of do more than what I should because we're in here. I don't know, every time we gotta go pee because the bathroom's right next to the reptile room. We come in and we check temperatures and make sure everyone's good. So, I mean, it's a lot more work, definitely, if you don't have a thermostat. Like, Baphomet's heating pad that I use for him is hooked to a thermostat. So, it's kind of what works for you. Baphomet has such a big enclosure, too, that it's kind of hard to get temperatures right. So, we have four different thermostat or uh, temperature gauges and humidif or humidity gauges in there. So, I mean... I don't know, it's kind of hard. Um, you definitely want clutter, I've noticed um, before with keeping snakes. And unfortunately, we're just getting over dealing with a mite problem where I had to have everybody in bear cages. And they definitely showed a difference in um, personality and, and things. Um, so I do think you need clutter to the cage, um, which can be anything. I mean, people go out and get rocks and... Uh, I think they boil rocks. I don't think you ever bake rocks. I've never done that personally. Um, but you bake, you can bake sticks, which I've done for the enclosures. I mean, there's cheap ways to do it. Um, but it's definitely something I think you should do. Um, and as far as feeding goes, like Firestorm here, because of how small he is, he feeds just about every week. We actually are dealing with a problem now where we got a mouse for him in... We got home, we got two mice because Black Widow was supposed to eat today too. And they were here for a few hours and we just went to feed them a little bit ago and they're dead. So we got to go deal with that tomorrow and get them a meal in them. Um, but yeah, so another thing I wanted to touch on too real quick, um, kind of because, like I said, everyone thinks that ball pythons are these great starter animals, which I don't want to talk you guys away from ball pythons because they are great snakes i love them personally and i think they are pretty easy to take care of in comparison to some of the snakes um but like this guy here he's been in a weird mood today um hasn't bit at anybody what are you doing dude um he hasn't bit at anybody and i mean it doesn't mean he never will but you got to understand the dangers. Right now, a bite from him wouldn't hurt that bad. I mean, I've been bit by the Florida king snake, and he, uh, and I mean, it hurt, but it wasn't that bad. Um, you got to think though; these guys' teeth is a lot longer than a Florida king snake's, um, especially when you start talking about them that size. So this is kind of like what you're gonna buy from a pet store is going to roughly be the size of Firestorm here. Like the camera shaking and stuff, my wife's holding the camera and she must have thought Firestorm was looking at her creepy even though he wasn't. Um, but this is kind of the size that you're going to buy the snake at. Where is he going, Baphomet? Baphomet here, I'm guessing, because like I said, I the guy I bought him from really didn't give me much information and what information he did give me was kind of vague or wrong completely but this is the size difference you're looking at in the long run for these snakes Baphomet, don't be mean i mean there's a huge difference here in the size that you're going to be dealing with like i said you reach this size here um assuming that you're eating properly or you're feeding properly, you reach the size of Baphomet here in could be a, a year and a half to two years, depending, I guess. Um, I, at least I've seen them get that big that quick. And each snake's different, too. You know, what he's, like I said, I think he's like four years old, and it's kind of hard to tell because I didn't get him as a hatchling. Um, but this one, you know, I've got as a hatchling, and in three years, he might not even be close to the size of Baphomet, and you got to take into consideration gender too, because females get longer and bigger normally than what a male does. 
So, I mean, there's a lot of things to consider when you're looking at a ball python and just remembering the small little thing you see at PetSmart isn't technically what you're going to get in three years. Um, another thing is for anybody who's thinking about breeding, which I've helped with breeding projects before. I've helped with way bigger snakes than these before. Um, my care as far as keeping them myself has been very limited, but I've helped multiple people keep the animals before because I can't obsess when I was like 10 with snakes. Um, so I went to friends' houses that had them, and I actually knew a guy that had venomous snakes that I helped around with. Um, so I've messed around with retics and vernees and everything. And temperament rot wise, these guys are great, but you know, the biggest problem that I think I've seen, especially with some of the rescues and stuff that I've talked to in the past, is this sweet 10 year old kid walks in with this, and then in a few years has this. And then they didn't handle it right or enough, or whatever the case ended up being that made the snake a little more aggressive. And this guy that was a little bit nippy has turned into this guy that can latch onto you and probably do some damage. I mean, you're not going to necessarily go to the hospital from him, but I mean, it's definitely going to hurt worse than if he bites you. So, I mean, that's kind of like my informational video. Um, I kind of wanted to do a little bit about the setup, but I also wanted to give my opinion on some things with them that I've heard personally online. So, um, I think I'm just going to end it there. And if you guys want me to go into an in-depth setup of how I think personally you should be keeping your ball pythons, I can. If you want more information on things, like I'd like to do a video eventually about um, how they live in the wild and things too, which I'll probably do that on my own. Um, and if you guys got any comments or anything um, about like something you want me to talk about with them and us have a little bit of a discussion, cool. And if not, uh, that's fine too. I mean, it's the first video, so if no one ever watches it, then I guess there would never be any comments to talk about. So, Anyways, if you guys do watch this though and you want to follow me, go to Instagram, um, Heavy Metal Reptiles. There's a Facebook page up and a Twitter too, but both under Heavy Metal Reptiles. I haven't posted anything to them yet though because Instagram's kind of been my thing the past few weeks. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess I'll hopefully see somebody in the next video.